Happy Friday, Game Changers. What's up? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. What's up, guys? Good morning. How you guys doing this morning? Had a good morning? Have a good morning. Had to unmute as was Mike. Oh, it's been a good day. It's, it's me, been a good day. Had time to do both my makeup and my hair, which is super rare if you know me. So <laughs> there you go. It's a good day. Well, hopefully we wrap this series up today on a high note for you. Um, I had a great, you know, we've really, I've really enjoyed this. We've been talking about pacing your race and um, Wednesday got into staying in your lane. And you guys talked a lot yesterday specifically about what? I know you specifically, shifted gears a little bit. Yeah, we shifted gears a bit. And we talked um, about how like in the middle of the pit stops and the road hiccups on your journey, um, you can't keep looking backwards. You can't keep looking towards the past, but you have a future ahead of you that you have to keep going. Um, and it honestly, it went really well. It was a good, I think it was super needed um, in this topic for sure. So, I mean, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a series on, on driving, you know, this, or on this yeah. race because we stay, you have to stay in your lane. You know, they even have, I was uh, driving to the, uh, the reason I wasn't here on Thursdays, a small group uh, business meeting. I was driving and I was actually just kind of going through some of the things on my screen in my car to see what was available. And one of them was the rear, the side mirrors have a lane detection. And it's interesting, we're talking about rear view mirrors staying in your lane and then they have a lane detection. So if you start veering off, it beeps if somebody's, you know, in your blind spot. And <clears throat> so we have a tool as believers and that's the word of God. And if we stay plugged into God's word, you know, it will help us pace our race. And today we're going to end it, you know, um, I wanted to start, start by talking about or end it by talking about the power of now. And let me explain that. You know, the one thing about pacing your race, and when we even use the word pace, and some of the reasons we we become fatigued along the way, um, in addition to getting out of our lane, you know, trying to do something more called to do, constantly looking through the rearview mirror, you know, held back by our past, yeah. or you know, whether that's negative or positive, by the way, your past could be a positive past and you're not experiencing that Same. type of success now and you're still caught up on what it used to be. And whether those are the things that are holding you back, you know, but one of the things that you know, I think is comes to mind at the forefront when we talk about pacing your race is moving too fast, you know, moving, moving too fast, moving too slow. We're not paced properly. And, you know, whether we, we don't want to move into the now because of fear of failure, or, you know, we are just running a thousand miles an hour and there's not a ton of planning. There's power in the now there's power in the right now. And, um, you know, I've learned because I'm the person that doesn't like to wait. And I've learned that the, word, the Lord teaches me this lesson and has taught me this lesson of the power of the now, and it doesn't feel good. The way I'm taught this lesson is through sometimes frustration. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but when we focus too much on what has happened or the fear of what might or might not happen, we miss the power of now. And I'm going to explain this and we can talk about this a little bit. And then I want to, then I want to kind of wrap it up with, you know, just encouraging you not to quit. Don't quit too soon. Don't quit too soon. But Jesus knew this. He knew that this power of now, I don't believe that this is something that we're talking about for the first time. I believe Jesus was fully aware of this. And at the beginning of his earthly ministry, you know, there's a story that we're, we, we don't like to talk about. We don't talk about very often. I mean, it's not really something you hear about too much, but his mother, disciples and Jesus and, you know, their friends, they've all been invited to a wedding. And the wine runs out. You know, you guys have heard, you know, the turning the water into the wine. Well, there's a story there, and, and there's more to it. When Jesus, his mother, hears about this, this social taboo, she asked him for help. And this is before his public ministry. And, you know, he goes and tells her, he's like, Mom, I, you know, I'm just on my time yet, and da da da. You know, but finally she's like, you know, come on. And he does it. <laughs> right. And he said, what do I have to do with this? Right. It's not my time. But, you know, he's just enjoying himself at the wedding. But Mary is a discerning woman. She, you know, she knows that she has to push Jesus even out into ministry. So without a word in reply to Jesus, Mary turns to the servants. Listen to this, points to Jesus and says, do whatever he tells you. And so, you know the rest of the story, right? Jesus instructs his servants to fill six jugs of water, huge jugs of water at the side, at the side of Jesus. The water blushes and becomes wine, right? There's the miracle. But here's what I want to point out, right? When the master of the feast tastes it, he looks at the bridegroom and he says, you know, man, you kept the good wine until now, until now. Wow. And so not, not, to, not to the future, not 
keeping it to the end of your life. I know this is the end of the party. And, and he says, you know, most people bring out the good wine first and then bring out the, the, the less, lesser wine, but you saved it to now. He didn't say you saved it to last. He said you saved it to now. And so when the guests have had, you know, a lot to drink, some hosts usually bring out inferior wine. So play close, pay close, atten- play, pay close attention <laughs> to the statement, twister. right? You've kept the good wine until now. And so here's the thing. You know the saying, you know, save the best for last. Mm. If we're not careful, we can live our entire lives that way, thinking that the blessing, the miracle, the answer, the prayer is out there and it's coming one day, someday. But God doesn't just save the best for last. And sure, he can do that if he wants to. He's God, right? Right. But he saves the best for now. And so I want to encourage you to look at the now, right now, and enjoy the journey. When you pace your race, understand that there's something to be picked up in the now. And while you're driving, this morning when I was driving in, you know, um, Diana mentioned, you know, the other day that I like to turn things off and I kind of just had some time with God and I actually put a song on and I listened to it and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and ministered to me in that time frame, in the now, because I took time in pacing my race and say, okay, I don't have to, I don't want to just get to where I'm going. I don't want to think about where I just came from. I, I want to, I want to relish in the now. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? That's good. And so, you know, I just want to encourage you guys that we're in this journey and we pace our race and we're looking to get to the next pit stop. We're looking to get to the next rest stop. We're looking to get to the next, you know, uh, amusement park or wherever we're headed. We're looking to get off on our exit, right? The rest of this mm-hmm. stuff is just holding me back. It's just slowing me down. But here's the deal. We can have victory right now. We can have mm-hmm. revival now. Our marriages can be restored now. Families can be re- not reunited now. Addictions can be a broken now. Breakthrough, they all can happen now. Yeah. And I think even going off of what you're saying, you know, like when um, a race, we've been talking about this throughout the week of how there goes, when someone's racing, um, you know, a physical race, when someone's racing, they have a lot of preparation that goes into that. And so there, you know, my mom even talked on the fact that my brother, he used to run cross country and track and before their meets, the day before they would be eating a lot of carbs, a lot of things that would be really good for them to burn off the next day. So they had enough fuel in their body. And I think kind of what you're talking about, that's really what that is. Like when you get still, sometimes there's that preparation in like in the spiritual um, side of things is being still and knowing that God is who he is. It's That's the uh, scripture. Be still and know that he is God. And I think sometimes we think that is... Um, I'm just being still and I'm not doing anything. But really what that is, is we're inviting him into our situation. We're inviting him into um, the preparation. We're inviting him into those things. And when we invite God into it, that's when I think we can see those breakthroughs. We can see those freedoms come into our lives. Um, There's a song uh, by Tasha Cobbs. I believe it's called something like about being at his feet or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a quote in it that a guy comes up and speaks briefly. And he says, um... The enemy wants to get you to worry so you get out of your seat, which your seat is your position of authority is what he, he describes it as. And sometimes like we, being still, um, the enemy loves to just when we're you know in that time of preparation and in that time of preparing for our race, preparing for our, our journey, um, sometimes it's just about getting to God's feet and being still and knowing that he's God. We always want to take these big stands, I think, like yeah. as believers. And that's good. There's a time and place for those things. But when we get still at his feet, sometimes the enemy will use that and he'll try to get us to get out of our seat, which our seat is our our trust in God. And you can represent, use that as a representation for that. He tries to get us out of our seat to worry, to get anxiety. Then we start doing things that really don't benefit us on our race. And we're like, okay, well, I just need this. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to do this and that, this and that. And we go over and over and over in these cycles, I think, that aren't benefiting our race. And then we're wondering, well, God, like, why aren't you helping me? And I think sometimes God's looking at us and saying, well, did you invite me in? Mm. And so I think it's so important that we invite God in the preparation of our journey <laughs> and throughout the, the journey. It's both. It's not one or the other. Amen. Yeah. And can I just say this? The enemy wants to distract us from the power of believing that right now is where the victory begins. Mm -hmm. And I I just want to say that again, the enemy wants to distract you. His, His, the enemy It's amazing. You know, I say this a lot, but I want to really point this out because you need to identify and call out the enemy. He doesn't have anything new. 
Yeah. The enemy doesn't. The enemy doesn't d- devise new plans. He just manipulates his same old tricks over and over again, and brings them out and just redresses them. And so he, his distraction is distraction is something that he's used for since the beginning. Since he was since he was cast out of heaven, he's he's used distraction. He distracted Eve in the garden. He didn't address the issue. He didn't hit it straight on. He didn't he didn't bring exactly the word of God the way God brought it up. He tried to do the same thing to Jesus in the in the wilderness. I mean, he used the word of God, twisted it, brought it up, but he did. He wasn't honest, and he tried to bring distraction to the to what he was really trying to get someone to do. And so he wants to distract you from the power. And I want you to hear this. Mm-hmm. There's power. We're talking about power today. We're not talking about just hey, you can do something in the now. There's power in the now, and yeah. and so you have to understand that power is what's you. You can unlock power, utilize power. Power can actually bring breakthrough. It can power can take you from where you are to where you're going. It can open up a door that's been locked. It can close a door that you haven't been able to shut. It can break an addiction. It can, it can, it can, it can take care of situations and that's the power of God. So the enemy wants to distract you with his, with his old, you know, been around forever trick from the power of believing that right now is where the victory, victory begins. Can I just say this? The great days are not behind the church. The great na- days are not behind you. Matter of fact, God said that in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. My sons and daughters will prophesy. My old man will dream dreams. My young man will see visions. And, he, and you know, he went on to say, you know, that's going to happen in the last days. I will pour out of my spirit, not out my spirit, out of my spirit. He poured his spirit out the day of Pentecost. And in Joel, it says out my spirit. But in, in, in Acts, it says I will pour out out of my spirit. Where is his spirit? It's in us. And so the enemy wants to distract you and I from the power that's in us, believing that right now the victory begins. So the greatest days aren't behind you. God's not, God is not the God of the past only. He's the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But he's not just the God of the past. He's not sitting around waiting to show his power and greatness. And so, you know, I want to say this, you, you've kept the good wine until now. God's best is not in the past. Yeah. It's not in the future. It's right now. Amen. It's right now. Right now you can tap into the presence of God and the power of God for your life, for this season, for this moment. And I want to encourage you that that's, that is the truth. Amen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you know what? And, and it goes this, Ash, this is really, as we, as we kind of wrap this series up in the next 15 minutes. We, we need to not quit too soon yeah. because of that. See, there's a lot of people that want to quit right now. Let me just tell you, I've been tempted to quit things. I've been tempted to stop things. Even recently, I mean, discouragement has a way of setting in. Fatigue has a way of coming in. You know, will the, you know the, pay, the, the, the pace not being the way you see it or want yeah. it. That's and it. I'm going to tell you that if you don't tap into the power of now, it'll cause you to quit. It'll cause you to want to quit. And, and that's the enemy's job, right? He wants, to, he wants to get you to stop. And don't quit too soon. And I'm reminded of, um, you know, of diamonds. You know, I know you, you, you guys like diamonds. We right? like them. <laughs> so it takes three things to make a diamond. Mm. Time, pressure, and heat. Man, think about that. How many, how many, feel, like they, how many feel like time has, been, has not been your friend? In some ways, how many feel like, how many feel pressured? You know, yeah. how many feel, how many feel heat? How many feel the heat? And diamonds are, are made purely of carbon and formed underneath the earth's surface, hundreds of miles, high temperatures, extreme pressure causes this carbon atom to bond. And over time it locks into place and grows big enough to produce a diamond. Hmm. pressure, heat, and time. And I think that's what causes people to get off on pit stops. Mm-hmm. You've been sitting at, some of you have been sitting at the rest area too long. Mm-hmm. Some, of you, some of you pulled over in the rest area, took it, said, I'm just going to take a little nap in my car on the journey of life, and you've been in that, you've been in that nap for months. Mm-hmm. Some of us have taken pit stops. Some of us have got off an exit too early. You know, some of us looked at the navigation and said, it's just too hard. There's too much traffic, too much, you know, mm-hmm. I'm just going to get off here. I'm just going to take this detour and pressure, heat and time will do that. Yeah, that's good. And I think even going off what you're saying, you know, um, maybe right now you're like, I, I'm, I hear you. I think it sounds good. It sounds nice. We're, you know, I 
I'm trying to pursue breakthrough. I'm trying to um, get those things in my life. And I just want to encourage you, um, one of the keys to any race is consistency. And exactly what you're saying, like there is going to be pressure, there's going to be heat, and sometimes it takes time. But um, the best is for you, and that's a promise that we have, that the Lord um, has plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope, even, I think, hope for your future even. So um, even right now, like as you're going through maybe something where you're in need of breakthrough, you're in need of peace, your need of whatever it may be. We talked about it yesterday that peace isn't the absence of our problems. It's getting in the presence of God. So when I have a problem, when I have an issue, I know where to run. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing in your life when you're going through pressure, when you're going through the heat, you're going, uh, you're going through a long time of just like, is this ever going to get, am I ever going to see the fruit of this? Um, it takes time, in the har- but the harvest is coming. Mm. And it takes time, you know, when the plant you plant a seed in the ground, it takes time, and it takes a lot of care, and it takes a lot of heat in the sun, and it takes a lot of watering, and it takes a lot of, it's a patience. Um, and I think, you know, don't mishear us and think that, it's you you know if you're not seeing results right now you're doing something wrong Mm -hmm. um that's not the case but it's it's the consistency it's that i'm going to be still and know that he's god and being still isn't being like okay well lord i'll just wait on you whenever you come i'm here that's not what that is being still is saying i'm going to rest my i let my soul be at rest knowing that i can trust who my god is doesn't mean you don't you know you don't go through the training the preparation the you know getting at his feet and um, seeking first his kingdom and all that you do doesn't mean you stop the working in between, but it means that your soul is at rest, that, hey, I'm doing my part, and I know God enough to know that he's going to do his part. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's going to be pressure, there's going to be heat, and there's sometimes going to take time. But con- staying consistent in that and staying faithful to that journey, God is looking for We've talked about this before. God is looking for faithfulness. God is not, it says, um, well done, good and faithful servant. He's not looking for well done, good and perfect servant that had it done completely, correctly, um, everything to the max. Like, he's looking for a faithful, consistent Mm -hmm. servant that's going to serve him. Scroll up there, Mike. I want to read Kayla's, no, not that. Scroll back down on that. Go back to my note. Yeah, go back there. Um, So Kayla Williams said, time, the life we live, pressure, the spiritual battle, heat, the obstacles we face in life. God can get us through this and Mm. we will be the diamonds in the rough. Amen. It's good. Amen. Go you shining. Like a little Aladdin reference there at the end. Um, Didn't he, the diamond in the rough? Right? I don't remember. No? No, well, it's not one of the movies I watched too many times. Scroll, scroll uh, down. Let me read you Masani's comment. The enemy also wants to distract us from the lessons and the revelations that God is bringing in your life. While you're going through your challenges, remember to embrace, remember and embrace God's promises. He'll strengthen you in the race. And you know, it's interesting. That's the whole purpose of the distraction of the enemy so that you can not learn and and then begin to apply the lessons because there's 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 power in the now there's purpose in the now and there's a plan in the now and so i mean that's the specific whole reason he hit it right on the head because it's not just so you can go through something so that you can just appreciate it more when you get it i mean it's it's the enemy wants to distract you from what god wants to teach you and god wants to god wants to build something in your life that's lasting and so i mean you know your you know your your trials serve a purpose don't run from them you know I think even one of the biggest, uh, we talked about how the enemy isn't creative. Like he uses the same tactics over and over in just different forms. And one of my, you know, I think the, the biggest three things that I've noticed that the enemy uses is distraction, discouragement, and division. Those are kind of the root of all the things that I think in my life that I've experienced. Um, if he can just get me divided with, you know, someone on our team, if he can just get me discouraged in my calling and where I'm going, if he can just get me distracted in where I'm called and to where I'm called to, where I'm going and from the path. I think those are the things that the enemy will try to use against us to to steal from us, to kill us, and to destroy us. He, it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he has come. Jesus has come to give us life and life abundant. And I think even, you know, now the, Jesus in place of Jesus when he left, he sent the Holy Spirit. And we have an ever-present help in those things. So the reason we, and you talked about it earlier, um, you know, the lane in a car, some cars have the 
the you're veering too far to the right or the left, it's like beep, 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 and it makes you get back on, on track and back in your lane. And we have the Word of God, number one, to do that, and we also have the Holy Spirit. And I think it's a partnership when we are diving into the Word of God and we're viewing it through the lens of Jesus, and we're like, okay, where can I find Jesus in this passage? Where can I see... Um, you know, how does this apply to my life? And we're continually absorbing that daily bread. And then we also, in partnership with that, we're asking the Holy Spirit, Lord, Holy Spirit, just fill us. Holy Spirit, just be with us. Give me strength. Give me wisdom today. Be my, my guide and my, uh, my light today. And when we partner those things together, I think we have, we have that, that lane checker. Oh, you're veering too far to the right. Oh, you know, you're getting distracted. Let's get back on track. You're getting discouraged. Let's get back on track. You know what? You're cho- you're lo- choosing division right now. Get back on track. Get back on track. And I think we have the opportunity. And it, that's why it's so important. And I think, you know, you hear it constantly in any um, where that maybe like church or faith podcast like this or whatever it may be. You hear a lot. Get in the Word of God. Read your Bible. Pray. And the reason why, it's not so you have a task on your list to do. It's so that you can connect with the Lord. And you can, all the problems that you're facing, if you run to the Father, like you have, you have a solution and you have an answer to those things. And it's so important as we're running, running our race or driving, as we've been talking about on our race, as we keep going, you just don't let yourself veer to the right or the left. Keep your focus because, that's, you know, it's dangerous. And you're on dangerous ground when you allow the enemy to distract you and to discourage you and to steal from you. So you're on dangerous ground, and that's why it's so important. That's why our cars remind us that. It's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. He'll remind us and continually refine us into that. You're a wonderful person as well. I love you, <laughs> Nana. That's my Nana. <clears throat> well, let's say this. So... Yeah, good stuff, good stuff, and we're we're getting to the end of this series here. It's been great, and you know, I just, I want to say this: don't run from your problems. You know, stay where you are. Stay, st- you know, when you're when you stay in your trial, you will learn more. You know, if it's if it's a trial, don't don't abandon it. Don't get a parachute and jump out, right? And and uh, you know, grow more. You'll do more. God is. I believe this. God is turning up the pressure. Because you go, well, what do you mean? God's turning the pressure. Because the Bible speaks of the way he purifies silver and gold. Yeah. The way silver and gold is purified is through the heat, through the pressure. And then the impurities rise to the top, and then they can skim the impurities off. And uh, listen, I know I have a lot of things, you know, that God wants to work out of me. You have yeah. a big plan or a big vision or you have big dreams, then it's going to require some heat and some pressure. And so, um, you know, God's turning up the pressure and the heat. And I believe he's doing that to bring forth a diamond. And it reminds me, um, you know, which you could preach on this a thousand different ways I have, but it reminds me of the story of the prodigal son. And, you know, really don't know what this, this, this guy was thinking, you know, he's, when he asked for his inheritance, I mean, I I can relate a little bit, but because of the lack of patience, but he, he left, he left a place where he had it all. Right. And, you know, I'm sure he had some friends, you know, hey, man, you know, out here in the real world, everyone's having fun, parties, whatever. You know, hey, listen, you know, just, just listen, man, I know you're, you're headed on that journey. I know that you're in that, that, that trial, but yeah. come on, c- come, come to this exit, get off at this place. And I'm not just talking about well, sin and things like that. I'm just saying that he had what he, what he, he had what he thought he wanted, but he had it God's way. And he bought into a lie. That the grass was greener on the other yeah. side, or you know that um, that he that he could that he could abandon, that he could parachute out, right? And after leaving home, he lost almost everything. He ended up broke, right? Eating slop with with pigs, and you know he finally woke up to the realization that everything he'd ever wanted was already in his father's house. Yeah. It's in the now, right? So and, and you know, the psalmist asked God to open his eyes. Wonderful things might be all around you, but if your eyes are closed, you can't see them. And so th- look around on the journey. You know, go, God, what are you trying to show me in this while, while, while I'm pacing, while I'm in this race, while I'm not at my destination, I'm not where I want to be. It's frustrating if I allow it, but what are you trying to show me? You know, open your eyes. God didn't leave you without potential. He didn't leave you without opportunity. You know, we have to open our eyes and we have to see, you know, those good things. And, and if you know Jesus, you have a Savior who has promised to never leave you or never forsake you. And that's the thing you can take to the bank. You know, we can't always say that about another person, but we can say that about Jesus. You can pace your race 
and you can finish your race. And Psalms 1, 1 through 3 says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord. They meditate on it day and night, and they're like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Amen. And and that is a that is this that's the word of God. And if you stay planted in due season, right? In your season, in due season, God's gonna bring the fruit. And uh, so I want to encourage you. This is this has been a great, great series. Um, and uh, awesome points today, Ash. It was really good stuff. And yes, Kayla, it is uh, Luke 15. I just yeah, I just confirmed that for you. <laughs> Amen. Good series. Yes, really good series. Guys, keep pacing your race. Keep going on your journey. It's not slow or fast and steady that wins the race. It's just steady. It's keep not steady. fast and furious. Fast and furious. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It's not fast and furious, Matias. Sorry. <laughs> he loves all that stuff. It's not fast and furious. Slow and steady wins the race. Steady, steady, steady. <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you all for listening today. We hope you guys enjoyed this series. Hope you guys enjoyed this week. As you go into your Friday, we hope you guys have a blessed day. Hope that you guys are going into the weekend refreshed and you guys come back on Monday as we start our next series. But if you guys would like, we have a free daily encouragement text that goes out Monday through Friday every single day. It is completely free. You guys can opt into it by texting the letters EZGC to 813-522-3356. It's completely free. It's just a simple text message Dave sends out every single morning, maybe to help you get your day started off in the right direction. To every Everybody that joins us live, we appreciate you guys being with us live every single morning. Your comments, you know, all the reactions, the hearts, everything that we see going on, we love it. We appreciate it. It's great for us. Um, but if you guys can't join us live, you can always catch the replay on YouTube every single day. David Villa Game Changer. Um, you can search for that to find the replay on YouTube. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, the biggest one being Apple Podcasts. Make sure you subscribe to us on there um, if you ever want to take us on the go. To everybody listening on all of the audio platforms we push to as well as maybe watching on a replay, you guys can join us every single morning live to hear this every single morning at 8.30 a.m. EST, Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube live. If you guys would like to join in the conversation, throw some comments in. Again, make fun of my bald spot. Have at it. Um... Summer 21 Faith Gear Drop is up on the site. Grab it while you can. We have a limited supply, and once we run out, it will be a very, very long time before we are able to restock it. So if you want it, grab it while you can. This week's um, featured Bible plan is Unfair Advantage. It's a four-day reading plan on the Bible app and version. Go check it out. Read through it. Let us know what you think about it, and enjoy. Also, just as a heads up, we probably have a new Bible plan coming out, I believe, in the next... I think once we submit it, it takes about a week for approval. So probably in the next two weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for that and we'll announce it once it's coming. But thank you all for listening. We hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Friday. Have a blessed day. We will see you guys bright and early Monday morning at 830 a.m. And on that note, we out. <laughs>